Happy New Year, and welcome to the Painting Experience podcast for January 2015. On the podcast, founder Stuart Cubley explores the potential of the emerging field of process arts and shares inspiration from his ongoing workshops and retreats. In this episode, Stuart addresses a question that often comes up when someone begins to paint for process. Does it matter whether my painting is abstract or figurative? How do I know which direction my painting should take? There's often some confusion in the beginning of painting for process around the traditional distinction between abstract and figurative. Should I remain abstract? Should I not have any recognizable features or figures in my painting? Is it best to avoid anything that might lend itself to interpretation or bring about the thought process? Or on the other hand, is it actually better to access the internal imagery that exists within the human psyche and to allow those images to take form? These are questions that I get fairly often in doing the painting process with people. And I think it's interesting to see how the mind wants to categorize our experience and therefore feel somewhat more comfortable once it's decided whether it's better to do abstract or better to do figurative or whatever category we create. And so I'd like to explore that a little bit today because it's kind of bogus distinction, actually, and rather irrelevant in the process of painting, because it puts us back into our head, and it tries to create a value based upon whether or not uh, something has looks a certain way or doesn't look a certain way. So if we start in the beginning, and say someone who has no art experience and no training, comes to a workshop and starts to do the process as it's been presented, which in the beginning is uh, is very open. In other words, there's no assignment given. Uh, there's a, a safe space created where there's no comparison. And a person knows that they're going to be listening to the serendipity and not having to plan ahead of time. And so they get started. And if someone is open to that experience they'll often take it to heart and not have a plan and so turn towards the table and see a color and see a brush size that seems to attract them and go to the blank piece of paper and to allow some sort of stroke to happen. And then there's kind of a movement that starts to take place and one stroke leads to another stroke and a rather undefined painting that takes place where there's colors and different shapes and different strokes and you could say it's abstract you could call it abstract I guess if you'd like and as that person proceeds uh, very often uh, not always but very often after a while one of the strokes looks like something it reminds you of something oh it, it it's a face, or it's a tree, or that looks like uh, an animal, or, or maybe a rock. It could be anything, but it looks like something. And then you're at a, a fork in the road here, because do you go with what it looks like, or do you stay with the abstract? And sometimes people tell me, it looks like such and such, but... You know, I don't want to do that. I shouldn't do that because because that's planning or that's thinking too much. And so we have a discussion around that and basically I'll encourage a person to do it because that's not thinking and that's not planning. That's serendipity. Serendipity often speaks to us through particular. It doesn't just stay in general. And intuition comes in precise forms very often. So if something looks like something, it's announced itself. It's not come from thinking. It's come out of left field. And so I'll encourage somebody to go ahead and do it. Say, yes, do it. So that often unfolds for a while and can be very satisfying to start seeing. You start seeing things in your painting and say, oh, look, there's... 
there's something here and there's something over here and they all these little uh, images start to or large images start to emerge and then at a certain point there can be another leap perhaps you've turned away from your painting and you're getting some paints and then you turn around and, and you glimpse your painting and you see an image in your mind's eye and maybe it has a location in the painting but something pops at you and it's no longer look-alike. In other words, it's no longer suggested by the stroke or the color in the painting, but it came to you in your mind's eye, very much like a dream does. And it's just an image popped at you, and you say, whoa, where did that come from? And our first tendency, of course, is to reject these spontaneous images because conscious mind you know, thinks they don't fit, or often there's a fear that we don't have the skill to paint them, that we're not trained, we couldn't execute it, it, it wouldn't turn out right. And so this is another fork in the road, you might say. This is another time when I'm often needing to encourage someone to go ahead and do it. And to say, look, it, it really doesn't matter if it turns out the way you saw it in your mind's eye, but it did present itself. And it's just the jumping off point. It's just the tip of the iceberg. There's something here that wants to be explored. It's pulled you towards it. And you want to give it credibility. So I would say go there with, with that image in mind that you saw and see what happens. Let it be born under the brush. So this takes some courage and requires you to dare allowing your own forms and images and way of painting to come forth. It's challenging, and there can often be judgment that's encountered in that process, and I think that's one of the reasons we avoid doing it. And yet it's very satisfying when you do it, when you, when you uh, begin to allow your own internal imagery to be born and to take form. And there's a quality here that I relate to a phrase from David White, the poet. He speaks about coming out of hiding. And this is very relevant for me in the painting process because being willing to allow your own images to come forth and your own forms and, and your own precise paintings, there's a coming out of hiding. There's a willingness to show up in your particular way that's different than anybody else's way. And there's a kind of individuation. You're allowing your own individual images to come forth. You're allowing something that's very unique to you to uh, take place. That's a, a very important aspect of the painting process. But that doesn't make images better. And I think this is really important to understand because it is true that in this process of individuation through art that we can be in denial, we can be avoiding actually allowing our own images to take place. We can be in denial and be uh, kind of defensive around allowing our own images to take place. And then we get stuck, of course, and the energy stops and we find ourselves kind of at a dead end. And so it is important to, to take the risk and to allow ourselves to come forth in that way. But again, it doesn't make images better. There are times when we are deeply in the stream of the creative flow and the brush is moving, it's being drawn into maybe certain repetitive gestures and sometimes you wonder, what are these fine lines that I'm doing? Are they roots? Are they, they look almost dendritic? Are they cracks? I don't know what they are, but they feel really, really good to do. And then you might have these sort of drop-like things coming down, and, and you can't get enough of them. And you just feel like they, they feel so good. They're almost, they're getting tinier and tinier. They're little dots, and dots within dots. Are they tears? Is it rain? What is it? Are they stars? You realize that you have no interpretation. You're painting without interpretation. And the mind could easily label the painting as being abstract because there's no recognizable images in the painting. But 
you're being drawn to do it. And can you say in this case that you're avoiding something because uh, you're not doing imagery? So I think you can begin to see that it's a rather artificial distinction. And it really doesn't matter. I think that's the main point. Because what really matters is, of course, does it have juice? Does it have that quickening, that feeling of being excited in the moment, being drawn to do something? And this happens in paintings that have recognizable images and paintings that don't. It really doesn't matter. What really matters is the energy. And when you're being drawn to do something, which means the, you know, the brush feels really comfortable doing these fine little little lines, and it just it can't get enough of them, and it wants to do more and more and more and more and more. There's something there that is so compelling and functioning on a level which is beyond the comprehension of the conscious mind. It really doesn't make any difference whether you can label it as something or not. And if you're being drawn to an image, and then some image pops at you, and in your mind's eye the imagination is, is, is alive and well, and something has come to you to paint, and it's got excitement and fear both mixed in at the same time. Excitement because it, it's new, and you don't know why it came to you, and, it, and yet it's very precise, and you can see what it is. And frightening because you're not sure you can execute it and it might mess up your painting and what does it mean anyway and what will people think? But there's energy there. And so what if that's what mattered? It's really about the energy rather than the product. Then you see you enter into a very exciting realm. And you realize that we exist on both these levels in a way. In other words, we we exist in form, and yet we're beyond form. We have a certain identity that we walk around with and, and function with in life, and yet we really don't know who we are. We are not that self-image that's been created through experience and through other people's opinions and our own ideas of ourselves. There's, there's much more of a mystery than that. And... The painting process is really a way of living that mystery, engaging the mystery and traveling with the mystery. And there's something very natural about that, of not defining our experience and therefore ourselves by these categories, by not valuing one aspect of experience over another aspect, but realizing that there's a deeper mystery and that it's really our job to allow that mystery to unfold and to recognize ourselves in the mystery as opposed to being defined by a particular form. You can learn more about the painting experience and find a list of upcoming process painting workshops by visiting our website at www.processarts.com. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please share it with a friend. The theme music for this podcast comes from Stefan Jacob. We thank you for listening and hope you'll join us again soon.